Welcome. My name is Terrence McGuire, and I'm one of the instructors for the SANS FOR 585 Advanced Smartphone Forensic Class. And today we're going to talk about encrypted iTunes backup files and how that might help you or be a challenge to you in a smartphone forensic investigation. So we usually get the question, how am I going to acquire a locked iDevice? Right? So most iDevices now, if it's locked, to be able to acquire it, you have to have it in an unlocked state. There are some third-party vendors that can assist you with that, um, but there are limitations to that, and time and money. It, it costs money to, to use Celebrate services or there's gray key that's out there, but of course that is only available if you're in law enforcement. So you may not have that option available to you. And what we would advise is try to locate a backup of that device if you can't get into the handset. Think outside the box here. Don't always just get focused on the handset itself. Where might, those, where might you find an iTunes backup? Well, usually on a local computer system whether it's a Mac or a Windows desktop or laptop, you may find backups that are created with iTunes. And now you could also find backups in the cloud. Again, that cloud's gonna present somewhat of a challenge to where you're gonna have to be able to get access to it and have legal authority to access the backup files themselves. Another challenge you're gonna find with these backup files is they may be encrypted by the user. So you may have an encrypted backup that doesn't give you access to the data. Kind of the silver lining to that, or the good news is if you're dealing with an encrypted backup, it actually contains more information. Apple will allow things like a keychain, which would be the passwords, Wi-Fi, web browsing, and health data can only be stored in an encrypted backup. So in a way, if you're dealing with an encrypted backup, you have more data. How are you gonna get into this encrypted backup? Well, there's a couple different options. One is Hashcat. The nice thing about Hashcat, it is a free open source tool that will allow you to try to crack this encrypted iTunes backup. It's cross-platform, so it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And it supports multiple hash types, not just iTunes backups that are encrypted. In the class, if you take FOR585, the Advanced Smartphone Forensic class, we will use open source tools in the class as well as paid commercial tools. So, uh, for example, during this lab, you'll also use the Elkhamsoft phone breaker. So you'll get to see how that works as well. That is not a free open source tool and I won't be addressing that today, but just as a reminder that the class is tool independent, meaning we use commercial tools as well as free open source tools when we're teaching the course. So here is the minimal options or parameters that you're gonna need for Hashcat. So we'll, we'll address a few of these to, to show you how that works. So I'm running Hashcat. I have to pass it a hash type. So that's that dash M option. So the 14,800 tells Hashcat that it's dealing with an encrypted iTunes backup uh, 10 or above. I then have to pass it that option of attack mode. In this example, the attack mode is zero, which is telling Hashcat I'm gonna use a dictionary attack. I then have to give it the hash file.txt. And, and the reason that that sort of has that asterisk next to it is, I can't just give it the manifest plist. You're gonna see that the manifest plist in an encrypted iTunes backup holds the key, the encryption key, but I have to get some of those parameters out, uh, put it in a set format so that Hashcat is able to crack that. And that's, Probably where most people make their mistake is they just try to pass the manifest P list to Hashcat uh, and that will fail. You're gonna see that in, in the next slide, the parameters that we need. And then my last 
option there is the dictionary that I'm going to use to try to crack this encrypted iTunes backup. Where do I find these iTunes backup files? So here's showing you the path. Actually, this is uh, these are mine on the, I, I store my iTunes backup on an iMac, uh, but remember they can also be stored on a on a PC as well. So you're usually going to look for that mobile sync and then that backup folder. And what you'll see is then you'll see another folder contained in that backup folder. Each one of those are going to have a unique GUID, that unique device identifier, and that's going to be specific to the iDevice itself. So you'd be able to associate that unique GUID value, that unique device identifier, back to the iDevice that the backup was created from. And then as I dig further into that folder structure, you're going to see a series, besides the backup files, you're going to see a series of plist files that contain information about the backup that was created. Um, and we will go into each one of those in the course itself, uh, but right now we're just emphasizing the manifest plist. And what you're actually looking at in this slide is the manifest plist sort of in a hex editor, and you are viewing not only the encryption key, but also the salts and the iterations that are all part of this encryption process. And it's these values that Hashcat needs to be able to crack the password. So again, I just can't pass it the manifest P list. I have to extract these values out of the manifest P list to be able to give that to Hashcat. Now we all know uh, those that are in digital forensics, we know you like dealing with data in a hex editor, uh, but there is a script for that. So what you're looking at in the next slide, and I've got to give a sort of a shout out to Phil's MD. He is the author of this script. He is also one of the folks that are involved with Hashcat. Um, that is the URL to the site to be able to pull down his script. But he's got a Perl script that he, you can just run against the manifest P list and it's gonna pull those values out for you. So it makes life a lot easier. And that's what I've done here in this slide. I've taken his script, I've run it against the manifest P list, and then just created what I called iTunes backup password.txt. And then that's what you're looking at in this next slide. Once the script runs, it pulls out those values, which is going to be the encryption key, it's going to be the salt and the iterations, and then it puts it in a format that Hashcat can then recognize. And then this is the file that I'm going to then pass to Hashcat in that earlier slide that Hashcat will be able to crack. And that's what you're looking at here. I didn't do a live demo, but you're looking at the end result. I am now running Hashcat. I'm passing the mode, the parameters for the type of the attack against that iTunes backup password.txt, and then I've got a dictionary attack that I'm running against the encrypted backup. And you can see uh, in this setup, it took about a minute, 36 seconds for Hashcat to crack the password. Now, the password was Apple, all lowercase. It wasn't very advanced uh, to demonstrate for the for the exercise, but by using Hashcat, I could now then take this encrypted iTunes backup, load it into my forensic tool of choice to be able to parse the data. The tool is then going to ask me what the password is for decryption. I'd be able to give it that value and then be able to conduct an examination on this encrypted iTunes backup. If these concepts are of interest to you, you may want to think about taking FOR 585. What you're looking at in this slide is the upcoming courses in 2019. Lots of different options. We have international locations. As you can see, at the beginning of the year, we're in Amsterdam. Later in the year, we're in London. We're in other locations across the United States. 
in February and April, three different locations. Also, if you can't travel, like where you have that asterisk next to New Orleans, that's a simulcast class, which means you can virtually be in the class from the comfort of your own home. And SANS also offers this on demand. That's sort of an asynchronous class to where you take it at your own time uh, for when you'd be able to complete the course. There's links down below to be able to sign up for the class as well as the course blog, which could give you more information about advanced smartphone forensics. Appreciate your time. Hope to see you in a class soon. Thank you.